may be seated. It's great to see everybody here on the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day to everybody. It's so wonderful to be with you again after being gone the last two weeks. I sure missed everybody. And I kind of hated to be gone, honestly. But it was kind of one of those things that I was kind of supposed to do, so I did it. And I guess it's kind of like going into the penalty box in uh, hockey. You know, you do something, you sit over there, now you get to come back out. So I don't feel like I was being punished, but, you know, I was, uh, I really didn't want to leave you. And yet here I got a couple of weeks off. So it, it, it's all good. I, I, I know that you had some good speakers while I was gone, and I was glad that Marissa came over and spoke, and also Kirk Nystrom, and I'm sure that they blessed you with their speaking, and I'm just thankful they were able to share on those two days. So again, welcome, and it's great to see you here today. I just have a couple of announcements. We did an interest survey back in May, some of you filled it out, and we said we were going to do a 40 days of prayer, where we just prayed for the church. And I was telling a friend the other night, I said, you know, that 40 days has come and gone now. We started May the 22nd, and then we continued all the way through June. And I must admit, I missed a day or two where I intentionally remembered to pray. You know, that's what happens when you go on vacation, you know. The prayer life should not go on vacation, but sometimes you just kind of get out of the routine. But I think, you know, for the most part, I kept praying for the church every day, just that God would lead us in the direction He wants us to go. And so I am encouraged that so many people filled out those forms. Now, whether you filled one out or not, you are all invited, or those that would like to come on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, or 9 o'clock, excuse me, 9 o'clock until about 10.30. We're just going to kind of go over some of the ideas we've kind of come up with and to see uh, maybe some ideas as far as plugging people into different ministries here if they would like to help take the lead. And then we'll just see where God leads us from that point. But So we're kind of taking these early steps. And again, I'm very thankful for the people who have acknowledged that they want to do that. So if you want to come, whether you filled out one of those interest surveys or not, there's still time. We'll have some extras if you want them. But July the 10th, that's this Saturday here. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you, some of you were here back on May the 22nd when we had the Tabernacle and Table Group with Marshall Larson and some of the folks in that band. And they were here playing that night. And everybody just loved them. We're going to have them back this Saturday Again, July 10th, over at Oakland. So they're going to come over to Oakland this time. You're welcome to come. Again, it's just part of those 40 days of prayer. We're kind of finalizing it, celebrating it. I don't know if we're going to do anything out in the parking lot ahead of time. But if so, we'll let you know. But that's coming up on Saturday. So we'd like you to be there if you can. It'll be a good time. We'll have some good live music with these instrumentalists from, I believe, the dobro to the violin, the fiddle to the guitar. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it if you can come. And they would love to have you. That supports what they're doing. That kind of validates what they're doing because they really are practicing hard over at the First United Methodist Church. That's where they're kind of based out of. Uh, although they're not necessarily a church, they're having this ministry. So you'd be welcome to come over to Oakland again, 7 o'clock this Saturday night. It's not loud, amplified music, so if you don't want to hear... Uh, rock music real loud. I'm sorry you'll be disappointed, you know, if it just makes it so you can just feel it coming through. And you won't hear that. You'll hear some good music and some good testimony. So, again, that's something coming up. And really, that's about it. I believe we have our administrative council meeting snuck up on me. I believe that's this Tuesday night, isn't it? Seven, six o'clock here? So that's the first Tuesday. Wow. The day after the holiday. So we'll see those of you on the ADCO meeting here on uh, Tuesday evening. At six, I will be here a little early. If anybody from the pastor parish committee wants to get together, we can visit for a few minutes. If not, that's fine. I don't have anything pressing to talk about. So anyway, that should do it in the form of announcements. Um, I did speak to Debbie Gasper yesterday. She's over at Kansas Rehabilitation Hospital. She's really dealing with quite a bit of pain after her recent surgery, and she said thank you for the prayers. And she said keep praying for it. And I said well, I'll pass that on today in church. So we want to keep lifting up Debbie and some of the others. I've, I've heard from Kelly. Sounds like she's doing well and she hopes to be back with us, I believe, next week. So keep Kelly in prayer and we just want to keep lifting her up. Is there anything else that we can pray about today? Anybody got any prayer requests? Yes. Um, this isn't necessarily a prayer request, but I, Micah and I are already married, but we're having a second wedding in August, August 7th, and I have invitations and uh, RSVP cards if you would like to attend. 
Um, and then I'm hosting a shower for Abby. Um, and you are all invited. There's a um, invitation hung up in on the bulletin board out here. If you'd like the information, I just ask that you um, RSVP to me so I can make sure we have enough chairs um, and things like that. When is the shower going to be? It's July 17th at 1, um, right up here at the Firehouse Event Center. Um, it like used to be a bookstore, and then it was a firehouse, um, like a little craft place, and then they moved, and it's an event center now. So. Oh, it's not the fire station over here, then. No. Because they can really give us a good shower if they turn that out. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. Hey, that's good. You guys come out and give her some love, give Abby some support. You know, last year was COVID, and they just did not get to do that. They did not get to do the wedding like they had hoped, but I, I applaud them for doing it. And we had a small wedding out in the uh, out of Commons. I'll never forget it. It was the first and only wedding I've done. So uh, you're special, and we love you, and we're looking forward to this next one. We've got somebody over here who wants to say something. Yeah, yeah. Phyllis? We need to pray for Marshall Larson because this is his first day of mm -hmm. ministry to St. Mary's uh, Bellevue. And I'm on the website right Elmar. now. In it. Yeah. That book says great now. Pray for him for this first Sunday. I pray for him this morning. So. Marshall's excited. He's got, uh, and he's all still doing the tabernacle and tables. So he's he's got a lot of his plate. Yes. Well, I guess everything I've got, other people have. So I'm just, the only thing I must have is fatigue. <laughs> I do need prayers from the well because they found a hermit. Oh. So she has to go to a Okay. Yes, back to my, my aunt, please. Okay. What's her first name? Yvonne. Okay, thank you. And then you know my other one. Okay. Amen. Lisa, it's great to see you here today. So welcome back, and it's a pleasure to have you here. So let's bring her life also. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, we do thank you so much for bringing us together on this Sunday. It's a holiday. Lord, we, we, we can't help but remember the, the blessings that we have here, Lord, in our country. Lord, it's, it's got a lot of challenges, and yet, Lord, we are still so thankful for the freedom to come together just like this today. So many Christians in other parts of the world cannot do what we're doing right now. And Lord, we pray for those Christians in those persecuted countries around the world that you would just give them your grace and your, your comfort. Let them know you're with them, your uh, peace, Lord, that comes from your presence in their lives. But Lord, we also pray for uh, the, uh, the country that we're in. Lord, we ask your blessing and Lord, may, may we be that light that shines in our own communities. Lord, we may not be able to change the whole country and the whole world, but, but Lord, you will help us to uh, shine that light when we're out meeting with people. Some of us have had a chance to talk to a lot of people this week in different scenarios. And Lord, just uh, help us to, to shine your light, to be your representative, to help form relationships with people that would open that door and down the road that we could share your love with others. Lord, we're so thankful for uh, the people in this church today. We pray for all those requests you just heard, Lord. Uh, we pray for Mike. We pray for uh, Debbie, certainly. We pray for Yvonne. We, we also... Uh, Pray for all the others that we just heard. Pray for Joe and, and just really, Lord, all the different needs, some of which I'm sure were unspoken. Lord, we all have needs. And, Lord, you know those needs. We just ask you would, 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 would meet us at those points of need, Lord, and, and just uh, help us to know, Lord, you're working in our lives, even if it's hard to see sometimes. Lord, help us to know you're very much involved with what we're doing. Lord, just help us to turn toward you to, to slow down in the midst of a busy time of year, even though it's the summer. Lord, help us to turn toward you and not to take a vacation from you, but to really plug in and, and stay connected with you. And now, Lord, we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a great song, page 381. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. <clears throat>
Trembling took hold of them there, anguish as of a woman in travail. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. We have fought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk to Mount Zion, go around the mountain, and Consider well its ramparts. Go through its citadels that you may tell the next generation. This is God, our God, forever and ever. God and our God forever. Amen. And then our gospel reading today out of the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. This is Jesus uh, that it's referring to. He left that place and came to his hometown. And you all know his hometown, not Bethlehem. Nazareth, right? So he left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. And they said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their own hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. <laughs> and he could do no deed of power there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went among, out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testament against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. May God add his blessing now to the reading of the scripture. Well, as we said today, of course, as you all know, is Independence Day. It's the 4th of July. And there's some songs in our hymnal that, that relate to this. And I think it's good that we acknowledge what's going on with, with this day. And so we'd invite you to join in today singing of the hymn or the song, America. And you'll see there's a lot of references to God in this song. How often do we get to sing this song anymore? Remember when we were kids in school, we sang all these songs? and don't yeah. sing these very often. I thought, you know what, let's take advantage of this. The 4th of July rarely falls on a Sunday, after all. So I thought this would be good. We'll have another one at the end of the service. So y'all just join in and, and sing with all you got. Page 697, America.
be seated. I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come forward at this time to collect the offering. Caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding 
that they cannot be expressed in words, that things no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I'd be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me, to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away, and each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses, and in the insults, and the hardships, the persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May God add his blessing to the reading of oh, that. That's for sure. I was out at my granddaughter's t-ball game. Y'all know what t-ball is. It's not a ball shaped like a T, if that's what you're thinking. It's a round ball. And that was on Friday night. And these are little four and five year olds. It's really amusing to watch them. You don't know what they're going to do. They've gotten better. I was out there, very first game of the year. My goodness, it was cold that day. I was shivering out there. I wasn't dressed properly back in May. And then the other night, I didn't need any jacket here. I was bundled up. You know, I thought, well, last time I was here, I needed a coat. Now, you know, I thought I'd wear a coat Friday. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it was nice Friday. It was about 90 degrees. I didn't need a coat. And they got better. The little kids were running around. They were doing good. There was a little girl playing catcher. So the, 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 the way this works is a father or a mother will throw the ball from about here to there, and the little kids will will swing. So they look like they're chopping trees. In fact, I was going to have one of them. I was going to hire one of these kids out and come over and chop down a little tree in my yard. The mom said they were too young. They said, four years old. That's too young. <laughs> but nonetheless... The ball would get by, every time the batter would swing and miss, the ball would trickle by the little four-year-old catching. But somebody was smart. They had a little seven-year-old back behind the four-year-old. That seven-year-old would catch the ball. <laughs> so here's what intrigued me. So I walked around behind the backstop toward the end to get a little bit of shade. And I noticed there was some writing on this little seven-year-old girl's shirt. And here's the word, powerful. <laughs> Don't you just love that? And I thought, you know, that's going to fit in good with this sermon because so many of us are preoccupied with strength and power and we do everything on our own abilities to get to those points. Think of all the workout places around the peak. And my goodness, there's more workout gyms than there are car washes. And goodness knows we got a car wash coming every week. I mean, are there really that many dirty cars in Topeka? I can see it in Osage County. Excuse me if you're from Osage County. I always know the Osage County cars because they're filled with dust and dirt. I said, and I kind of looked at there's barely an OS on the glass. See, I told you. I always think that car's from Osage County because it's full of dirt. I love Osage County. My father was from Osage County. I'm kidding. But they do have dirty cars down here. <laughs> They don't have any car washes in Osage County. They ought to come up here to Topeka. But, but, but the point is, there are so many workout facilities in Topeka. People are trying to pump that iron and get in good shape and maybe run and do their stair climbing. And I don't know what those machines are. If I got on a machine, I'd probably kill myself, so I couldn't get on. But uh, they, they do all this stuff to get themselves in great shape so they feel strong and powerful. And that's good. I've got no problem with that. I've got no problem with it. I don't do it, but more power to those that do. But here's the thing, even if we get in the best shape of all, of anybody, we're still ultimately got to acknowledge one thing, and that is that as human beings, we have weaknesses. And our weaknesses, we can do one of two things with them. We can sort of just leave them there, or we can use them to show us our need for God. And I think that's the whole message here today, is finding strength in weakness, 
Weakness can actually be a strength. The Bible's full of paradoxes. You know, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And, and if you want to be great, you've got to be the servant. So the Bible takes things that the world would have, and it just flips them upside down all the time. And this is another case right here. If you want to be weak, or if you want to be strong, you've got to at least admit your weakness. Because ultimate strength is going to come from knowing Christ. And, and, and depending on Him. That's really where I believe this is leading today. Paul here talks about this whole scenario where he is setting himself up uh, to talk about his thorn in the flesh. And it's part of what he's talking about here. But a little background was that in the church of Corinth, which is the people that he's writing this letter to, there have been now some people doing some power struggles. And they've been diminishing Paul. They've been saying, well, Paul, you, you, you're nobody, you know. All the stuff you said, you know, we've got these revelations of God. We, we, we're these super disciples. We're these super apostles. Who are you, you know? And they're questioning Paul's authority because the church was getting a lot of teachings coming in that maybe weren't quite right. Paul had to set these people straight repeatedly. And so Paul goes, well, you know, I knew a man 14 years ago who went up to paradise. We went the body around. I don't know. He's talking about himself. And Paul could easily have pulled rank on him and said, you know what, I'm better than any of you guys, so be quiet, you know. But, but he doesn't do that. He just, he says, I could, but I'm not going to. He knows not to get in this power stroke. He knows not to get proud of what he does. And he then talks about what God has done in terms of keeping him grounded and keeping him dependent on Christ. So that he doesn't get full of himself. You know, it's easy for us once we get a little bit of self-confidence that we can say, you know what, God, you got me this far. I'll take it from here. I don't need your help anymore. I got this. And, and, and when I need you, I'll call you back. But until then, you stay there. I got this taken care of. And then we go off on all kinds of tangents until we realize, oh, we've gotten off track. God come back and help us. He pulls us back. Well, Paul here is dependent completely on Christ. Totally. 100%. And that's what this is all about. Is He realized that his weaknesses here lead him to dependence on Christ. So he says he was given this thorn in the flesh. Now we don't know exactly what that thorn in the flesh was. There's been a lot of speculation on it. But regardless, the thorn in the flesh was something that he did not like. Think about when you're going down a house and, and maybe it has a wooden rail and you're putting your hand on the rail to hold on to it and all of a sudden, ouch, you know, you know what happened, right? You got a thorn. You got a thorn in the flesh. And, and what happens with that thorn, typically? You want to get it out right away, right? If you don't get it out, what happens to it? It festers and, and, and it becomes sore. It becomes tender. And, it, and all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I forgot to get that thorn out. And all of a sudden, you've got to deal with that thorn. Nobody likes a thorn. But you know what? When you get it out, it feels better. Well, here Paul, this great apostle, this great disciple, this great leader, he has a thorn in the flesh that may not be a physical thorn in the flesh in the sense of something like a splinter, but it's something that he would like to get rid of. And so he prays about this, that God would remove this thorn. He prays about it, it says, three times. But in the Hebrew uh, scriptures, uh, the Hebrew language, that word three means continual. He prayed about this all the time. He just said, God, please take this away. Finally, he came to the realization God wasn't going to take it away, that it was there for a reason. And he said that the reason he had that thorn in the flesh was to keep him from being proud. I found that interesting in reading this over and over this week. The, the, the thorn was there to keep him from being proud. So many times we get our own little pride, we get a little bit too big for our britches, and then we have that comeuppance. I remember one time not too long ago, there was something going on where I was going to try to correct somebody and tell them, okay, you need to do this in a certain way because the way we were doing it wasn't working. And then, I mean, it wasn't, and I don't think that necessarily came out of pride. I was really trying to help the situation, and, and I didn't say it. I mean, it wasn't a day later that I really messed up on a couple. It wasn't a huge mess up, but I was like, you know what? I better take care of myself instead of trying to take care of everybody else. Once I kind of get myself in order, I can see clear. You know, the old scripture where it says, take the take that little speck of dust uh, out of your neighbor's eye. Well, you've got a plank in yours. Take that plank out first. Then you can see clearly to take out that, that speck of dust. So many times we want to take care of somebody else's problems. And we've got our own. So what's the first step here for Paul? It was to admit that he had some weaknesses. 
and the weaknesses were maybe things that he didn't really like, but ultimately the weaknesses turned out to be a good thing because it led him closer to God. He prays to have this thorn of the flesh removed, and he keeps praying for it, and then it's revealed it's not going to be taken from him, it's going to be something he's going to have to live with. And here's what came out of that, that Paul received this awareness of the grace of God in his life. It wasn't contingent upon everything being perfect, everything being the way he wanted it to be. Think of the many times we want things to be a certain way in our lives. We want everything just right. Then we'll feel like everything's okay between us and God. It doesn't always work that way. It's a process. Sometimes we've got to go through that dark valley. And it's going to take time. So he found out the grace of God was still sufficient. It got him through every day, one step at a time. Even if he didn't like it, he didn't understand it, it was still there. And he learned just to trust God. That's something I think a lot of us learned this last year as we as we kind of get further away from the COVID. You know, we look back a little bit and we go, man, you know, we really had to walk with God, didn't we? A lot of us, we had to really trust in Him because we didn't know where we were going. We were all just sort of floundering away in the dark and we did the best we could. And now, thank God, we're at the point that we're at. I so much more appreciate seeing your faces than, than the mask because I was telling the pastor friend there, yes, I couldn't tell whether they were laughing, frowning, smiling, what they were doing. And now at least I can see. You know, so so that's a good thing. But but again, um, you know, God's grace was there and his presence was with us. It also gives him stronger character. You go through a trial, you get through a difficult situation, it's like that gold being refined by fire. You gotta go through it to get those impurities burned off. And once you do, you become stronger. And I believe Paul experienced that. He also had humility. Like he said, he didn't want to have this pride, so he had to make sure that he was trusting totally dependent and, and was completely dependent on God. It wasn't about what he was doing. Paul, the great apostle, the great mind, the great theologian, the great you know, leader of the church, he had to depend on God. Paul had a lot of humility in doing so. And then, I believe lastly, it's the ability to empathize with other people. If you struggle, you're more likely to accept other people's struggles. Because, you know, you might say, there by, by the grace of God go I, you know. And we're not so quick to throw stones. We're not so quick to judge people. Because, you know, we realize, you know, we're all vulnerable. We're all weak. And, you know, let's bear with one another's burdens, as it says in scriptures. Let's, let's pray for each other. Let's lift each other up. And that's what we can do as individual Christians and as a church. So today, do you have a thorn in your flesh? Uh, and if you do, is it helping you actually as, as far as getting you closer to Christ? Is it helping you in your walk with Christ? Or is it something you're still dealing with? Um, God's grace is the thing. It covers us completely. We are aware, I believe, of His goodness when we go through difficult times, right? We, we know that He has walked with us through them and that He is not going to leave us. He's not going to uh, abandon us. Sometimes I think people might confuse thorns with issues that result from their sins. I'm not so sure that those are the same things. I think that God will help us overcome the sins that we have in our lives. I'm not so sure those are always thorns. They could be uh, but but I'll, but I'll let you guys kind of come up with that idea. The thing is, you know, if we have sins, addictions, habits, uh, hang-ups, uh, just things that we say, well, that's just how I am. You know, we, we shrug it off. I believe God wants to bring us beyond that. And He will help us to overcome those things that are keeping us from Him. I think the thorns actually bring us closer to God. I believe the sins keep us farther apart. So I think that's the difference between the sins and the thorns. So we have to just make sure we're uh, not confusing thorns and sins in our lives. God's power in our lives helps us to overcome those difficulties that we may struggle with. We all probably struggle with one thing or another. I was driving down the road just a couple of days ago, and I may have shared with you a while back how oftentimes these thoughts will come into my mind about this is something that happened way back. I go, oh, I can't believe I did that, or I, I can't believe I said that. And it's these thoughts that almost make me a little bit in despair because of just the idea that, well, I really let the Lord down there, you know, I, or, or I let somebody down. And, and I, I've, I've thought many times those thoughts, especially if it's a sin that has been forgiven, I thought, well, that's the devil bringing that up because God's already forgiven the, the sins through, through Christ. And now, 
Uh, he's separated my sins as far as the east from the west. He's forgiven and forgotten those sins. Why do I keep thinking about some of these things? It's not like I think about them constantly, but they come up once in a while. And so I've often thought, you know, just take those thoughts and give them back to the Lord. Send the devil to the cross because that's where my sins are covered. And yet, here's what hit me the other day. Maybe those thoughts aren't always all bad if they lead us to this realization. Yes, that you know what? That's true. What you say, set, but, 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 but what I'm getting this thought, what these thoughts are saying to me, those are true, but that shows my weakness, but this shows also the power of God that forgives those sins and those weaknesses and helps me overcome them. So in that regard, you know what? Sometimes that's okay. That's just another reminder that God's still working in my life. He hasn't left me. It's not based on what I did. It's not based on how, perform, how I performed. And, uh, you know, it's not on my grade card if I got an A, B, or C. It's all based on the blood of Christ by the blood of Christ on that cross when he died for my sins. Painful memories can help us if they just remind us of the love and the forgiveness and the grace of Christ that we have experienced just through faith in him. And the scripture verses I was thinking about this morning when I wrote this down right here was, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. There's something else here that today I want to share with you that Paul said he prayed three times. He prayed constantly, he prayed continually, and nothing changed. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, you know, I've been praying that, but God hasn't answered my prayer. I was wondering what they mean by that. God hasn't answered the prayer. Because I think God does answer prayer. He may not have said yes, if that's what they mean by not, God not answering the prayer. He may not have answered the prayer. What they probably want to add is, God hasn't answered my prayer, these words, the way I wanted him to answer them. You know? Because sometimes God's going to say no. Here's a perfect example. He told Paul no. Sometimes they'll say, wait, or not yet. But not always is he going to give us exactly what we want. Yet he is still with us. He's not going anywhere. And instead of focusing on our weaknesses and our thorns, let's focus on the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit that's within us. So there is a paradox that if we're to be strong, we first have to come to grips with our weakness and then rely exclusively on on the Lord. There's a verse today I want to share with you out of Nehemiah 8.10. I, I know you guys know this verse. that says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's say, The way I can do things is my joy. We're never going to find joy in what we do, are we? It's always going to be found in the Lord. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10. I always thought that was from the Psalms. It sounds like a psalm, doesn't it? This is in Nehemiah. Another one I love in, in Isaiah 40 and 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How are you going to get strength? By going out and trying real hard and doing it? Uh -uh. By waiting on the Lord, letting Him fill us up. We wait upon the Lord and we shall renew our strength. We'll run like, uh, we'll run uh, and not be worried. We'll walk and not faint. We'll soar with wings of eagles. That's what we'll get when we trust in the Lord and wait on Him. And then one of my favorites is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So who gives us the strength? Not ourselves, not our efforts, not all of our trying, and all of our doing, but Christ strengthens me. It's a gift. Paul never gave up. He could have gotten into this power struggle again with the people. He could have pulled rank on them and said, well, you don't know who you're talking about. I've did all this, different things in all these different churches. I've been in all these different countries. I've set up churches. You know, God spoke to me, uh, and Jesus Christ came to me. On the road to Damascus, and he blinded. He could have told him all that stuff. He didn't. He said, You know what? I'm not going to get into this with you. If I wanted to, I could, but I'm not going to get into that. I am instead going to focus on my weaknesses. And I'm going to tell you how God is working in my life. Yes, indeed, there is a paradox in all of this. There's something that would seem almost not right in our human way of looking at things. And yet, God's way of doing things isn't our way of doing things very often, is it? Think about Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, when he was hanging on the cross. That would appear to be the ultimate in weakness, wouldn't it? Jesus Christ. Hey, he had a good run. He lasted three years. People were probably looking up. He, he did really good while he was here. You know, well, we'll find the next Messiah. We'll find the next Savior. And yet it was through that ultimate act of weakness where he gave his body and his life for our sins that the real power 
and the strength of God was shown because three days later, Jesus Christ comes walking out of that tomb. He has now defeated death. He's defeated the devil. He's defeated sin once and for all. The ultimate act of power and strength. But how did he get there? He first had to show his weakness. That's our story today. If we will re remember that we give Christ everything we've got, but we first come to him in weakness, we realize that we can do nothing on our own. As much as we try, it's still going to come up short. And God will meet us at that point. That's the first step. We have to admit our need. And we have to admit our weakness. Here's the good news. Jesus offers the same death-defying strength to you and to me that he showed when he came out of that tomb. The power is still there. The Holy Spirit's alive. He's active. He wants to be in our hearts and our lives. He wants to take us from this room today and give us joy and give us confidence and peace when we go out here, when we're in the community, when we're with our neighbors and our family and our friends, just to show that love of Christ. And when the door opens for us to say a word, he'll speak right through us. We just have to be obedient and let him do it. This is a free gift for the taking. It comes to us by way of the love of Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. When we depend on Jesus, our weakness then becomes our strength. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you that we don't have to use our abilities and our own strength that we would conjure up, Lord, by going and trying to do all these things for you. But Lord, it's all based on our dependence on you, your love, your grace, your mercy that you just give to us. We don't earn it. We, we, we just receive it. And we come to you, Lord, as needy people today, as weak people, people who, who try to serve you, and yet, Lord, we all fail, we all fall. Uh, and, and yet, Lord, we know you're with us. You pick us up when we've, when we've stumbled, and you set us back up on our feet and let us keep going. Lord, for those that are struggling with thorns in their flesh today, whatever it might be, I pray, Lord, that you would meet them at that point of need, show them your love, that you're with them, and that that has not diminished anything in your relationship. And Lord, just help us then to ease and to rest in your arms of love, that you will carry us, Lord, in spite of our weaknesses and our flaws and, and, our, and the things we do that we wish we didn't do. Lord, just help us to know that you still love us and you want to help us get through each and every day, one step at a time. Lord, I pray your blessing now upon the remainder of our service. Thank you again for this, this encouraging word from the scripture. How, Lord, in our weakness, Lord, we can find strength in you. We ask this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We have a familiar hymn, page 378, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
Would you join me in the 
passes. We're going to get back on the ADA. It's on the screen as well. We cite this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I wanted to thank you all again for being here on the 4th of July, especially. I know a lot of things going on, compete for a time. Great to see the children come forward for communion. Just really blessed me today to see that. What a surprise to see them all come up. Thank you for those watching for our children. Today. I want to give a special welcome to visitors today. I know Donald is here from Texas. Donald, welcome. And uh, let's give Donald a round of applause. Thank you, Father. We're so glad you're here with us today. It's wonderful. We've been looking forward to your visit. So thanks for being here, sir. And so now we will uh, invite you to stand for our conclusion America the Beautiful, page 696.